Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And you know, I wasn't even gonna make a, a video today. I I was like, okay, I'm just gonna have to do it probably in the morning when I get off because I work overnight tonight. So I was in the bed trying to get a few hours of sleep before you know I had to go to work. And I'm in my bed and minding my business, lurking, you know, for a couple of minutes on Instagram until I, you know, close my eyes to, you know, get some rest. And this is why I can't fuck with y'all because y'all held me up being messy, knowing I need to be sleep to try to get me some sleep, you know, try to give me some rest before I go do this night shift. And girl, my sister them tagging me, my coworker tagging me about Nicole Murphy. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The first thing I wanted to talk about was Donald Trump. Let me, everybody already know about Donald Trump and him telling these four uh, grown ass women um, to go back to where they came from. Um, and I believe only one of them was born out of the country, but she's been here since she was 17. I think the other three were born here in this country. Let me just say this much and then we're gonna go ahead because I mentioned this the other day, but I just have a question for the Trump supporters. Why is it not okay for someone to critique this country, but it's okay for you to? Because when you walked around here in 2016 wearing a Make America Great Again hat, you were saying that this country was not great, right? When you walked around here with that red hat on, when you said, when you took on what Donald Trump was saying about make America great again, that means that the country is not great, so we need to make it great again. So why is it okay for you to say that this country is a shitty ass mess, but no one else can say it? I'm so confused on your stance. What is it? Is the country great, or should we make it great again? Am I the only one that's confused by that? I know, I know I'm making some sense. I know I'm not, I know, I know what I'm saying. I'm not pulling it out of my ass now. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into Nicole Murphy. Nicole Murphy, close your legs to marry men. Nicole, with all that body you got, you are a, you are a, an attractive woman. You light skinned bitch. <laughs> you got green eyes. You mean to tell me the only nigga you could go lay down and bust it wide open for was a married man? Nicole, I thought you was better than this girl. You just like the other ones. Now don't get it twisted. We done all fucked a married man or two before. Um, <clears throat> but when I did my dirt and when I was fucking married men, it was in my 20s. I wasn't in my 50s doing whole shit, girl. Nicole, you old enough to be my mama. You, you, should, you should know better. A woman in her 50s should know better. In the simple fact that you run the same circles as Layla Rashawn, Robin, I know you've been in Robin's face before. I'm not saying you her friend. I'm not say, even saying y'all are associates. But I know y'all done ran the same circles before. Eddie Murphy, Antoine, Robin, Nicole, y'all done ran the same circles before. Oh, Nicole, this is not a good look for you, girl. You thought because you was going to be in Italy that wasn't nobody going to see the dirt that you was doing. Out of all the niggas, you know how many niggas like Nicole, you literally can choose from any nigga you want. And you chose to go lay down with a married man, a man. Ugh. This is the shit that we do when we in our 20s. Maybe 30s. But then I'm sure not your 50s. And for you, Antoine, you just, you really and truly, you more trifling than Nicole. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Nicole don't owe nobody nothing, honestly. We might say she a little bit hoish. We might say she a little bit trifling. But at the end of the day, you Layla's husband. Layla posted in February about supporting you at an event on her Instagram page. Now in July, you halfway across the world with another bitch in her face, tongue down her throat, 
Now your wife done had to delete her Instagram page because you've embarrassed her. Nicole didn't take no vows, no vows before God. You did. Nicole didn't stand up in front of her family and friends in front of her pastor and recite all this shit that you said you was and what not, was not going to do. You did. So at the end of the day, while we can say, Nicole, you trifling, Antoine, you, this is all your fault. Because Nicole won't be kissing a married man if the married man didn't go out and run the streets like he was a single man. Y'all niggas ain't shit but hoes and tricks. I keep telling y'all, get what y'all gonna get out of these niggas and leave them alone, okay? At the end of the day, vows don't mean shit. Because if they did, one so, one so, it wouldn't be so many people taking vows before God and before their family and friends and then turning around and doing hoes shit like they single. If people really and truly, really and truly respected their vows, and respected the fact that they just took these vows in front of their family and friends and before God and a pastor. People want to do a whole with shit. But y'all don't believe in it. That's why y'all that's why y'all say these vows and then go back to acting like y'all single a few years later. And then on top of that, I heard that Antoine and Layla been married for like 20 years. That's how you gonna do a bitch after you've been married to her for 20 years, Antoine, if that is true. Honestly, I don't give a goddamn if we was married for a month. You're not about to be out there running running up streets embarrassing me. A white woman can have your sorry ass. Layla, fuck that nigga. Cause Nicole Nicole, remember, bitch, how you get him is how you lose him. How you get him is how you lose him. I beat the shit out, baby. If I was bitch, if I was Layla, I beat the shit out of Nicole. <laughs> I beat the shit out of Nicole, and I'll make sure I divorce my husband and try to take every fucking penny I can get. You hear me? I can't beat his ass, but I damn sure beat that checking account. Okay? I'm beating Nicole ass. I'm beating Nicole. I don't care. She. I don't care. I don't care. She don't owe me nothing. She don't owe me nothing. She don't. But bitch, you know I was married to this nigga. He knew he was married to me too. But at the end of the day, you gonna get this ass whooping though. You gonna get this ass whooping, and he gonna be broke. <laughs> Cause after I get done with this lawyer, I'm about to go get me. I'm about to go get that same uh Robin girl. Go get that same lawyer Bernadine had, and take that nigga for all he got. Okay. Mm. Beat Nicole ass too while you at it. Cause she deserved that ass whooping. I guarantee y'all, Nicole and Layla, they been at the same parties before. They done spoke to each other. They done kiki in each other's face. At least two or three times. Black ain't that many people in black Hollywood, okay? It's more of us on the outside than it is on the inside, bitch. <laughs> mm. But y'all women that hold a death. I wish you would. As soon as I saw Nicole, I just windmilling that hoe. You hear me? Just in jail. And I'll take all that nigga money. We'll see. We're going to see how long she, he going to stick. Uh, she going to stick around when he re, when she realized I done took all that nigga money and divorced his ass. Okay? And gave him the kids. You can have the kids. I just want the money. <laughs> oh, child. Anyways. Let's talk about R. Kelly Crisis Manager. What's his name? I don't even know his name. Girl, he was sat down with Gail. Basically, long story short, this nigga basically said that he would not leave, let his kid, his daughter be around R. Kelly. He won't let his daughter be around any, uh, any person who has been accused of being a pedophile. Like, girl, you are supposed to be the crisis manager. You are supposed to be the one. You are supposed to be the Olivia Pope, pretty much. And you done got your ass on national television and told the people that even though you represent R. Kelly, even though you're here to fix the problem, you wouldn't let him be around your daughter, girl. You know, you know for a fact. And now his daughter is twenty, so she's grown. 
But girl, you know for a fact R. Kelly like little girls. And for those who who and for those out there who who want to question talking about why I said R. Kelly was in front of a middle school because they said he was, girl. Y'all think I'm just pulling that shit out of my ass? R. Kelly would go back to the middle school. It was all in the documentary. People saw him at the middle school, a grown ass man at a middle school, on the hunt for little girls who still probably wearing training bras and got unicorns on their goddamn panties. Girl, you, you you need to fire him, girl. And let me just say something. A lot of y'all wanted me to talk about R. Kelly. Look, I'm over R. Kelly. Either the nigga gonna go to jail or either he not. I mean, it ain't I mean, it ain't too much for else for me to say. What y'all gonna do? Are y'all gonna send a nigga to jail or, is he, or either he still gonna roam the streets and fuck up these little girls' lives? These little black girls' lives. You know, one of my one of my friends, one of my co-workers, she basically pretty much told me she don't care. She's still going to listen to his music. I said, well, girl, that's fine. You can keep listening to that shit. Just know that when you listening to some of his songs, he really made that song off of fucking a teenage girl. How about that? I was watching. Omarosa was on um, this show this past Saturday. Uh, I think it's Saturday, Saturday Night Politics. And I just got a question. And I've actually asked this question before. Some videos ago. Videos ago. Why is it that we're so quick to throw away the black women who may do shit that we don't like. But we give these niggas chance after chance after chance. What I'm saying is when it comes to like the Omarosas and the Stacey Dashes and the Chrisette Michelles and the Tina Campbells. You know, Chrisette Michelle, she sung a song at... Donald Trump's inauguration. Tina Campbell, she said she voted for Donald Trump. Um, Stacey Dash, <laughs> she was just a dumbass. Um, Omarosa, you know, people felt like Omarosa turned her back on the black, the black community and now she's crawling back and that may be the case. But then when it comes to the ASAP Rockies and shit, Jada and everybody else want to get ASAP out. When it comes to Kanye West, people, like, I, I, I did not stop fucking with Kanye West. But I also really didn't stop fucking on some real shit. Omarosa may be a little bit trifling, but Omarosa really could be a real life Olivia Pope on some real shit. Omarosa is probably one of the smartest people in the world. The way that bitch can flip some shit, I have never seen not one person make Omarosa look like a fool on TV. You know how many people get on television and they look like fools? Even when they know they in the wrong? I have yet to see Omarosa look like a fool. Even when she knows she in the wrong. I'm also smarter than a bitch, okay? Now, like I said, she might use her, her, her intelligence and her power for evil, but that bitch is bad. But I just want to know why is it, why why are we so quick to give the ASAP Rockies, uh, you know, chances and the Kanye's and the, you know, the Chris Browns and all these men who beat on women, say that I don't, that that's above, you know, I don't live, in, I live in Beverly Hills and Soho, but then the Jada Pinkett Smith and all these other girls want to sign petitions and get him out of jail. Now, I don't want ASAP over there getting beat or raped or nothing like that, but at the end of the day, just like he said, when he was over here, I live in Soho and Beverly Hills, so anything else that's going on outside of this zip code ain't got shit to do with me, which really was a slap in the face of the people that support him. Because how many people do you do you think support him that don't live in Soho or Beverly Hills? Probably the majority, if not all, of his fan base. So for him to say, I don't, I, basically, I don't give a shit about nothing that exists outside of these zip codes, and you still support him, you a goddamn fool if you do. Y'all know how I feel about it. Look, I don't support. I ain't made it. No, I ain't made it. No secrets. Don't you ain't gotta support nobody who don't support you. Point blank. Period. I don't care if you black. Walk around here with a dashiki on. I don't care if the biggest afro. I don't care if you don't support me. I'm not gonna support you. That's just one on one of me, <laughs> girl. It's that simple. Anyways, um, oh. Did y'all hear about Erica Thomas? So, so supposedly she's something, a legislator or something in um, Georgia. She was at the grocery store. She's nine months pregnant. She was in the ten items, ten items or less lane, and a white. There were two other lanes open. She got in that line. She said she had about fifteen items. 
Now, before we get started, I used to work at a grocery store for about, ooh, this is when I was like 19. I worked at H-E-B. Uh, it was a grocery store called H-E-B. I worked there for like five years. So, I mean, even now, like when I go to a grocery store, like before I get in an express lane, I count my items. However, if it's a few items over, I'll still get in line. Now, I'm not going to go through the express lane with a basket full of groceries, but if like if the express lane says 15 items, if I have 20 in the other line, in the other lines alone, bitch, I'm going to get in this line. <laughs> okay? I'm getting in this line. You're going to scan these groceries. I'm getting up out this store. So, she said she had about 15 items. There were two other lines open. A white man gets comes he had like one item, I believe. Whatever however many items he had, he was following what the sign said basically. He gets in that line. Um, he complains to the cashier. The cashier pretty much says, that, girl, ain't nothing we can do. You can say what you want to say, but girl, she in the line. We're going to scan the groceries. It is what it is. This white man, he's a white man. Erica is a black woman who's nine months pregnant. He leaves the store, thinks about it, comes back in, and proceeds to curse the woman out. She claims that he told her, she should go back to where she came from. She's a stupid motherfucker. He just cussed her out, basically. Some people say they thought she was lying. I don't think she's lying. At the end of the day, in true white people entitlement, yes, she was in a line, and yes, she was not following the grocery line rules, okay? How and ever, if there were two other lines open, why did you just not go to the other line? You wanted to start some shit with this black woman. That's why you noticed that she had more groceries than what the sign said. You decided to get in that line instead of going to the other two lines that you said that were available and open. So you got behind her and started some shit. You went outside, felt like you needed to say something. You said you went back in. Now, I, now the, the crazy thing about it was, in the clips, he could never remember the things that she told him. I don't remember what she said. I didn't say that. I just told her. I did call her a bitch. I did. No, you called her a bitch. You called her a motherfucker. You told her she was dumb. You told her she was stupid. And you told her she don't need, she don't belong because she need to come back where she uh go back to where she came from. That's what you told her. And this whole thing stems from the fact that you just wanted to start some shit with this woman. She gets on social media. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I mean, she's she's pregnant, so I'm sure. You know, like I said, when you got a, a whole motherfucker in your body pressing against your organs, I'm sure when you're pregnant, you got a lot of shit and a lot of a lot of emotions going on. So, but she gets on social media. She's crying. She's just like, I, girl. From the way she was crying, you would have thought that something. In my opinion something really really bad happened but i guess because she was pregnant and this white man talking to her crazy that's probably why she was so emotional girl girl y'all hoes know who to fuck with because you want to say that to no regular bitch who wasn't pregnant or no regular or no or no or no, no grown-ass man Cause the way I would have cut your ass the fuck out, girl, we would have got to fighting in that stuff. We would have been in jail. Anyways, that's it, y'all. Let me go ahead and watch Real Housewives of Potomac. Uh, since I'm up, since y'all got me up being messy and shit, I guess I go ahead and watch Real Housewives of Potomac and do that video. I still ain't watched polls from last week, so I'm probably not gonna review that. I still haven't watched. Uh, I started watching uh, Real uh, the Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. But I'm probably not going to review it. I'll just review the uh, reunion that come on tonight. So I might as well go ahead and watch that before I go to work. Whatever, girl. All right, y'all. Let me go. Bye.